everybody, welcome to G4G here on YouTube. I am your host, Napalm Dawn, and today we are talking about the brief little scare that we had that Marvel Avengers Alliance 2 was getting sunsetted, or will be sunsetting, thanks to a picture that was discovered. And it's a picture that I'm not even seeing in my game, and I've been in the game twice since that picture was released. So, an article on Marvel Avengers Alliance Times, or MAA Times, claimed that the game was sunsetting and said that this was good and listed a whole bunch of reasons. I'm going to be breaking down the reasons that they talked about, and for the large part of this, I'm essentially going to be disagreeing with them and countering them. That's what this video is going to be about. It's my reaction to it and my thoughts about their article and what they were saying. And I'll tell you, the grand theme of it is, the biggest problems that I have with the article, is that it was written from the perspective of somebody who is approaching MAA2 as an MAA1 player, making direct comparisons and bringing their mental baggage over from 1 to 2. They did not properly evaluate the game simply as a game or as just a Marvel property that is mobile. Now, as you know, we have other mobile Marvel properties such as Marvel Future Fight, Contest of Champions, uh, Academy, Pinball, there's Avengers Alliance Pinball, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of other games out there. There was even a Guardians of the Galaxy one for a little while called the Universal Weapon, and that one seems to have disappeared. And that was like the, the drag-and-drop auto-attack-y kind. Um, but yes, that's the general theme of the article and where this author makes the majority of his or her mistakes. So the first thing is, is that they showed a screenshot. Why the scare started is they showed a screenshot saying that the final tournament was coming. The final tournament. Do, 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 do. I, I don't see that. I, I see practice, but they had something different. They had this final tournament coming in a day in 18 hours. I maybe my mobile version says that. That's that's certainly a possibility. Um, I, I don't see that when I'm doing my Windows 10 version over here. Matter of fact, I'm gonna grab my dinky little iPad Mini. I've never really liked this thing, it's just too small. Was jailbroken, managed to accidentally unjailbreak it. Hopefully I can maybe jailbreak it again. But, um, yeah. So they, they see this, uh, I haven't seen this. So, uh, this cave is a surprise, albeit not much of a surprise. Blah, blah, blah. Clearly, this is a sign that its short run is coming to an early end. Did it follow the same path as tactics? Fuck tactics. Here are some of the reasons why it failed to live up to that success that one has endured. First of all, these are... Please understand, these are opinions, and this person... I'm, I'm just going to say guy. Maybe that's a sexist thing, but just bear with me. Just for ease of making a video, I'm going to say this guy is stating opinions, but they are coming out as facts the way he says them. First, they moved away from Facebook, listed as a negative. Okay. Yes and no to this. Again, this is a case of tying it directly into MAA1 which is not exactly fair. 
He said they moved away from Facebook. Uh, hi, buddy. We, we have Contest of Champions. We have Future Fight. Why are you saying they moved away from Facebook as if it's a new thing? You could honestly say they expanded from Facebook. So Facebook is typically limited to PCs. Of course, you could do Puffin, but Puffin presents its own issues. And not everybody really enjoys the Puffin experience, plus you have to pay for it. Yeah, even on my um, iPad mini over here, I'm not seeing this screenshot that they are seeing over here. I also find it slightly suspect that they are showing a uh, gas captain who is never tied to PvP, but okay. Being mobile is a good thing because not only can you be playing it while you are on a subway or on a train or a passenger in a car or at work or at lunch while at work or sitting around the dinner table or taking a dump or out in the backyard on a beautiful summer day. You can still do it inside during what would be your PC time. By, by the way, was so successful. Good job, buddy. Good spell check there. Um, it's even more freedom than being tied to Facebook in the Facebook Arcade. Because you might, your phone or tablet might not even be able to handle Puffin streaming this that well. So, it's, it's expansive from that. You can do it while you would do a PC game. You can do it while you can't PC because you're away. And now with autoplay, shit, you can do it while playing Marvel Avengers Alliance 1. I mean, set the game on autoplay, move it to the side a little bit, do MA1 stuff, glance at the tablet, you guys are still alive, keep playing MA1. So, I don't consider this to be a bad thing. Plus, for Windows 10 PCs, there is a Windows version of it that you play right at your PC. Where you would be doing Facebook. What's the problem? Maybe this guy doesn't know it's available on the Windows Store. Maybe he doesn't even have 10 and he's still on 7 or just isn't aware of it. Isn't aware that you can play it on Knox or Bluestack or Handy Andy and play an Android emulated version. So, again, too tied to Marvel Avengers Alliance 1, assuming that Marvel Avengers Alliance 1 is its direct father. You could rightfully say, hey, they are saying MAA2, not a separate game like MFF, but still expanding Facebook. Removing the agent from the game was a mistake. This one, where is this one? I really think he's just way off on this one. This one, I think he's going to have people that definitely agree with him. I know of a lot of Marvel Avengers Alliance 1 and 2 fans who said this right from the beginning, including people that I rarely ever disagree with and, you know, get along with in our opinions on these games and whatnot. A lot of people do feel that sucks. We, we're we losing things like a Warbringer Axe and a Coulson's Revenge and the Son of the Demon set and the Demon set and the Apocalypse set. All that stuff. Yeah, but the trade-off is you get to do team-ups that you've never been able to do other than the free-for-all daily. You want to run a triple Iron Man? Hey, guess what? Run a triple Iron Man. You want to run four Captain Americas? Well, I mean, you want to run three of them but have a choice out of four? You can do that. You want to run uh, Team Triple H? One Hawk and two Hulks or... Two Hulks and a Hawk and three Hawks and a Hulk and whatever you want to do. Yeah, you could do that in this game. So, yes, you are losing the agent, but you are able to do something that you've never been able to do before. You can actually make an Avengers team and get at least three of them instead of two. You can run double Black Widows and a Daredevil. I mean, it's, it's a give and take. 
And at this point, it's an opinion on whether or not losing the agent is good or bad. This isn't a fact. You might view it one way. Your friend next to you may view it a different way. It all depends on if you like the ability to just run all heroes and not get mucked up by a depowered, normal-ass human who just happens to have a big gun and maybe a shield for the team. So that is a consideration there. This is this comes down to an opinion. They strayed too far away from the original game mechanics. This one I have a bit of a problem with. They made it simpler. They literally took all of the crazy nuances of the rock, paper, scissor of Marvel Avengers Alliance 1 and made it very, very simple. Everybody gets a morale boost when they attack their weaker class. Everybody basically gets a negative morale boost when they attack their counter class. So if an infiltrator is hitting a scrapper, that infiltrator is going to be weaker on it. And the scrapper is going to get basically a morale boost from that attack. It's not an uncommon thing. How about a fire type elemental thing in a game attacking a water elemental thing in a game? The fire person's going to have a disadvantage. Flip the script and have ice attacking fire. And it's a different story. It's actually simpler than Marvel Avengers Alliance ones. Like, what what happens if an infiltrator attacks a tactician again? Oh, all right, I'm stealthy. I get counterattacks. Here, it's just... You perform better if you attack your weaker class and you get a morale boost, or you perform less well when you attack your counter class. Uh, it, it's very easy, and if somebody started with two and went over to one, I think they would actually find it more complicated because there is more involved to it. And, uh, you know, well, I just did a stealthy attack. Am I going to activate... Uh, the class ability when I do that, blah, blah, blah. But here in 2, it's just a straight up... It's sort of like elemental property that we're used to in other RPG games. Now, you have to know that is where Marvel Avengers Alliance 1 and 2 and Tactics always gets their stuff from. They get it from classic RPGs. MAA1 was claimed by Justin to be his attempt at making an epic sweeping game the way Final Fantasy VII was. Ten, uh, Marvel Avengers Alliance 2 reminds me a lot of Final Fantasy X. Tactics reminded me a lot of fucking tactics. Other than the height. I mean, Final Fantasy Tactics had height differentials and everything, but this... Hi, Arthas. Cat is meowing at me. This is just simpler than it was. It was a lot more complicated than MAA1 and harder to learn. Um, again, for the most part, I disagree. The one part, uh, I'll say the one part that I do disagree with on the statement first, and then deal with my disagreements because there are more of them. Trials. Star Trials for Heroes, I do believe, are more com is a more complicated mechanic in this game than most things from number one. I will spot him that one. But, you know, leveling up an ability is, is easy. You just say, I want to level it up, and you use it X amount of times. Boy, math is really fucking hard. Did I do it two or did I do it three? Oh, well, I'll wait until I get out of combat and check. Oh, I did it two. I need to do it one more time. Boy, that's tough. Oh, I'm Mr. Hyde and a Nebula. Oh, shit. I might lose this one. This guy's probably high-powered. Um, to master a character, to make a character be the best they could be, 
might be a little bit harder. It's like, in this game, how do you make the best wasp? Oh, speed. Okay, I get it. I'm supposed to give her a lot of speed. How do I make the best iron fist? Our, uh, speed and attack and give him the I'm going to follow up on attacks iso to, to make him attack more. Okay. For the most part, other than star trials, getting somebody up to two stars, three stars, four stars, and when trials were bugged and not working properly, like gas cap, when he was released, that part is more complicated. But the rest of it, I don't think the game is complicated at all. You want to level up a hero, you take him to scouting, you take him to PvP, you take him to missions, same shit. You want to shortcut the hero? You give him ISO gas. You want to get a boost on that? You give him the appropriate gas. Either give him universal or give a tactician tactician gas. That's not fucking hard. And guess what? If you've played other mobile games, you've seen experience skips before. For example, Final Fantasy Record Keeper. Final Fantasy Record Keeper has those growth eggs. Final Fantasy uh, Brave Exevious has those um, cactors that you summon and then fuse them into characters. And that bumps up their levels rather than having to constantly take in the missions and everything. If you are a mobile player and not somebody who's just coming over to this from Marvel Avengers Alliance 1, like the author makes that mistake the whole article through, you're used to stuff like that. Other than that, I don't think the game is any harder, other than trials, but I mean, everything else is easier. You don't really have a way of shortcutting a character in Marvel Avengers Alliance 1. No, I'm not disregarding The Sim. The Sim is still an active action it is still bringing the hero on a party and doing active combat in some way does it reward a ton of experience well I, yeah absolutely but you don't have a skip the way that you do for gas similar to the equivalent of uh you know like growth eggs and record keeper um to so know I, I i don't think the game is particularly harder by any stretch i mean opening cells ooh, that's tough remembering that red cells are abilities and green cells are gas the blue cells are iso uh, Ooh, that's tough oh i gotta log in and do three dailies the only thing that's tough about the dailies is finding out where some of the mobs are oh i have to kill 10 hydra shit where are the hydra guys again <laughs> that actually says hydra that's funny no, I, I so I, I, I don't think it's harder. Time is a valuable asset to players that Playdom fails to recognize. So Playdom is not allowed to expand their games? It, it, is everybody only allowed five minutes in some future society? Now commencing game time. You have five minutes to game. Thank you. All players playing games after the five-minute mark will be shot on sight. I mean, what, what dystopian universe is this? People budget their time the way they see. This thing makes it sound like the only thing you do is come home, you, you work all day, you come home, you vacuum, you eat dinner, you bang the wife, you take a shit, you play some MAA, and you go to bed, rinse and repeat. No. I time is a valuable asset yes but again from the earlier discussion this was a mobile game it affords you the opportunity to play it when maybe you can't play MA1 because you can't be at a computer on your net You're, nobody's walking around the streets of New York City with a computer strapped to their back hooked up to 4G and a long extension cord coming out of their apartment. It doesn't happen, so... Yes, time is a valuable asset, but to imply 
that you only have room for one of these games, I think is is absolutely ridiculous. It says the fact that MA2 took longer to both learn and master. Uh, no. In comparing, if somebody started both games the same day, the in May somebody started one and somebody started two, they could be 90% done with two at this point. And they wouldn't have even made a drop in a bucket in MAA1. They'd be level 75 with probably 8 heroes. And getting silver in PvP. I mean, uh, no, it's not harder to learn. It's not really harder to master. Unless you want to get into, well, how do I find out what is like... How do I get this cap to be really good at what he does compared to this cap? Is this one a tank? Is this one an attacker? But all you have to do is really look at the abilities and they generally tell you. Does extra damage based on speed differential. Okay, I'm going to pump up this character with a lot of speed. Would you have a, a 90 gaming IQ over here? Failure to deliver new content on a regular basis. This one, I think he gets it. I think he nails it on this one. Lately, MA2 is a little crickety. It is a little ghost towny. But considering since people first started playing the game, uh, I mean, we had two PvP seasons before it went global. We had a Spec Ops before it went global. We had a very time-consuming split path global spec ops we've had nearly back-to-back -back pvp heroes we've had four chapters there's been a lot of content in this game since may i think now it is a little bit like when are we getting something new but it all depends on what your definition of when content gets old for example chapter four gets you mr hyde like we just saw in that practice battle is content old the minute it releases and you start playing it and that's when it start ages? It starts aging on you? Or is it old the moment you have 100% completed it? For example, I have MODOK, I have Electro, so I have Chapter 1 and 2 done. Almost done with 3 and 4 is of course very low and being completed. I don't consider 4 old until I've gone through and done everything and gotten Mr. Hyde. Its release date kind of pales in comparison compared to when you actually finish it. If you, if you just go by release date, then yeah, the game is getting a little stale. But unless you have Mr. Hyde, can you really claim that Chapter 4 is old? This gap in PvP is a little bit big, though. But anyway, that about sums it up for this, and that's just freaky. I mean, this guy's got huge egg on his face because he overreacted to a screenshot. And, uh, uh, you know, they, they came out and said, no, the game's not going away here. This guy's responding, saying MA Times would like to talk to him if they could find out who uh, Steve is. But I don't think, who cares about what Steve is? They should find out who Samantha is. Samantha is the source at Marvel Avengers Alliance 2 support. So that's who they should be concerned with. But yeah, um, the uh, they, they've come away with egg on their face on this when they have this huge article full of some what i think is just bullshit points and it's not even sunsetting so there you go guys that's my reaction to the scare that the game is setting down you know this guy's like who's steve i want to talk to steve i want to ask this dude who are you where did this picture come from Hey, did, was this posted somewhere on, like, Reddit or what? Because none of my versions of the game show this. And, you know, they're up to date and everything. So thanks for starting a War of the Worlds panic over here. I'm going to go turn off the radio now and look outside and not see death and devastation and aliens. Peace out.